or the most recent time? <laughs> Have you had a time lately when you let yourself be moved by the beauty or the resilience or the power of the living systems of the planet? I know you know this, but it bears repeating because it is all too easily lost in our driven Western culture. To be drawn by love is the only sustainable source of energy for engagement. Anger, fear, righteous indignation, these are powerful motivators, but they're like flares. They burn quick and bright, and they spend themselves in a fury. Love is everlasting, and it's a joy to tend like a campfire or a hearth. Welcome to the third and final step in Go Deep Green, to reignite your passion for the planet. The New Universe story reinterprets the role of human beings within the whole community of life on Earth, and it's a bigger story, and we can imagine, we can reimagine our part in the story, which is about participating, and that's refreshing, and it's a better story. But the real story, where the real energy is, is a love story. It's possible, speaking from my own experience, to feel that enjoying nature and taking pleasure in the beauty and the wonder inspired by the earth, to feel like that's self-indulgent, like it's taking away from the urgent work of stopping the dis devastation and, and fighting exploitation. It's also possible, though, that being driven, even for a good cause, is still being driven. It does not counter the culture that got us into this mess in the first place. Being driven is the energy of imposing ourselves. It's talking rather than listening. It's fixing rather than participating. As we discussed in the previous video, emergent systems resist being fixed. They demand being worked with and observed and listened to. I notice in myself a tendency to feel self-indulgent when I take time to be present to the planet, take a walk in the park or a few moments of stargazing or actually stopping and smelling the flowers. The issues are so pressing and the problems are so urgent and my level of access and privilege is so grotesquely out of proportion relative to most of the world's human population. I mean, how dare I enjoy myself? How dare I not? Perhaps it is the most countercultural way of being possible to revel in simply being. Human beings have evolved to love beauty, to be moved by sunsets, and to relish the feeling of sand between our toes. I firmly believe that joining the celebration of the unfolding of life with conscious, aware, conscious awareness, I think that's the source of all our powers for good. Thomas Berry, the inspiring Earth advocate who dreamed of a time that he called the Ecozoic Era, when human beings would learn to be present to the planet in a mutually beneficial manner, he wrote a lovely story about the moment that he first fell in love with the Earth and how that moment marked his whole life. Here's what he wrote. At the time, I was some 11 years old. My family was moving from a more settled part of a small town out to the edge of town where the new house was being built. The house, not yet finished, was situated on a slight incline. Down below was a small creek, and there across the creek was a meadow. It was an early afternoon in late May when I first wandered down the incline, crossed the creek, and looked out over the scene. The field was covered with white lilies rising above the thick grass. A magic moment, this experience gave to my life something that seems to explain my thinking at a more profound level than almost any other experience I can remember. It was not only the lilies, it was the singing of the crickets and the woodlands in the distance and the clouds in a clear sky. This early experience, it seems, has become normative for me throughout the entire range of my thinking. Whatever preserves and enhances the meadow in the natural cycles of its transformation is good. Whatever opposes this meadow or negates it is not good. My life orientation is that simple. It is also that pervasive. 
I bet you've got your own Meadow Across the Creek story, a moment or many moments that set you on a course of lifelong relationship with the earth. This relationship is precious and it needs you, not just your fighting for it and your advocacy and your loud shout for justice, but also your presence and stillness and silence, out of which will come greater insight and deeper energy for action. Do you have a regular practice of simply being present to the planet? Do you take time to revel in the beauty and to court the wonder? Can you let go of feeling guilty or self-indulgent about the time you spend connecting to the earth? Will you let yourself be drawn by love first, last, and always? Please participate in the conversation uh, the discussion for this unit invites you to share uh, something about your Earth love story with one another. And I'll see you in the next video.